Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio and today I'm sharing with you days 9, 10, and 11 of the Artist Trading Card A Day Challenge for, for uh, June of 2019. This is making a small piece of art every day that's an ATC, which is three and a half by two and a half. So I've been posting all my cards on Instagram and in the Art Joy of Sharing Art Community Facebook group as well as the Pick a Stick Challenge group. So you may have seen these cards before, but you won't have seen the process of how I made them. So I do have a set of card backgrounds that I made during the Art Joy of Sharing live stream show, and you saw them at the very beginning. Here is a photograph of them. Each uh, show this month of June for Art Joy of Sharing, we're showing different techniques for working on ATCs. And so this one was gel printing. And it's nice to have all these little backgrounds to start with. Um, there's already color on the card, so that makes it a little bit easier. This particular background was gel printed with pan pastels and a ATC mix-up stencil designed by Seth Apter for Stencil Girl Products. So I decided to continue with that same stencil. It has nine little ATC-sized stencil patterns on it. And they have a lot of different ones from different designers. Seth is awesome. He makes the coolest, grungiest stuff. And, you know, it's it's fun to have something that he designed. So uh, one of the one of the, the stencil designs on that ATC mix-up stencil has these little uh, plus sign or cross shapes on it. So that was what is was in the background. I decided to go ahead and add some texture with the same stencil uh, using some molding paste from Golden and giving that a good dry. Then I added some color with some fluid uh, acrylic paint, which is from Golden. It's called Golden High Flow. It's, it's really, really pigmented. It has a lot of pigment in it, but it's fluid. It flows. And so it I can drip it over. And I started with the dioxazine purple, which is a very dark purple and kind of dripped it over the area that had texture and then went with the uh, iron oxide color. I think it's red iron oxide, maybe. I think so. And dripped that over and it just adds dimension to the dimension by filling in the background a little bit darker. Then I used the Stabilo All Pencil on the edges um, to kind of give those shadows um, around the edges of the dimension. And then I also highlighted it with some copper paint and also some uh, colors that I picked from the background using the Neo Color 2 uh, water-soluble crayons, but not blending them, just, just putting them on there. They're a little bit creamy, a little bit waxy. Um, so that worked fine to add a little bit more color to those uh, plus sign shapes. Then I decided I needed some more dimensional pieces on here that would stand out from the card. And so I made a circle punched one that was stenciled with one of the other designs, one of the other motifs on this, uh, this stencil from Seth Apter. That's the only stencil I used, it's just the one from Seth Apter, the ATC mix-up. And of course, I'll link all the products and things below the video so that you can find them. If you'd like to purchase this stencil, you can find it down there. Um, I made these pieces out of some tag board st type stuff that's from a cereal box and I colored it with paint, stenciled it with paint, and then added a little bit of highlight color using those same Neo Color 2 crayons. And I, I made a circle one with a circle punch. Then I decided I needed that same shape from the background, the cross or, or plus or whatever he intended it to be. So I freehanded one of those, painted it black, and then stenciled over the top with some of the copper paint. So the, the, the round one was copper stenciled with black, and the cross-shaped one is black stenciled with copper. But both of, of them I added extra color with those crayons and not really blending it at all. So I also edged the card using a a black 
permanent ink pad, which is something I like to do. I like edges around things, and so I tend to do that. If I don't layer it onto another piece as a frame, I often will edge it with ink. Then I glued the circle one down with some Aileen's Tacky Glue, but then for the plus-shaped one, I, I put it on foam squares which allows it to stand up from the background and I also went around the edges of the foam squares because they're white with a Posca pen to color the edges with black after I'd already applied it so that when you look at it from the side you don't see these super white looking things it's just some, one of those little little weird things that, <laughs> that bothers me so uh, I don't like white edges on things that are black it's just just the way I am so it's easy to do that with a Posca pin. Then I, I thought everything was looking to the same matchy matchy and not standing out from the background. So I decided to take my white Posca pin. You know, Posca pins are one of my favorite things. They're acrylic paint pin that's made in some Asian country and imported here. Um, I also had stenciled on the word from the stencil that said seek. And I highlighted that with some of the white, I highlighted the circle and the plus shape with some of the white uh, pen, and then that looked better to me. I also added some splatters just to add some more white into the composition. You put a color one, where, one place, you should put it in another place when you're doing a composition. Then I had some of these uh, textural pieces that I'd made uh, when I was doing the pick a stick challenge, they're made out of puffy paint and peeled off. Um, it was something that I did for the the prompt peel during the pick a stick challenge. And I glued that on there as an added element. And I was pretty happy with the design. I think it's it's um, very Seth after looking, very grungy. And I don't know, it was interesting. <laughs> so the next day, day 10, I decided to use another one of these backgrounds. This one is made with gel printing again from the show, the Art Joy of Sharing show. And I'll, I'll link that in the iCard so you can go watch these being made if you want to. Um, this one was made with the mini uh, gel plate that's a triangular shape. And I just put some paint on it and then I used a piece of textured wallpaper uh, pressed into it to create that texture. And I just kept making uh, triangular shapes on there and layering until I, I found that it was interesting. I decided to do a little bit of illustration. Um, I haven't done that yet for the ATCs. I do like to draw, but it takes more time than um, sometimes I have in a challenge <laughs> where you've got to make something quickly every day and I, I'm afraid I'm going to get behind and I've got all these other things to do. I'm busy. So I haven't been drawing very much for this challenge, but I decided I needed to do an animal. I like to draw animals, and so I decided a camel. It's getting really hot here. Um, by the end of the week, it should be 108, they said. <laughs> That's Fahrenheit, of course. That's hotty, hot, hot. So I was thinking about heat, and I was thinking about camels and how they store their own water in their hump and wishing that I had a hump because i got to continually drink water. I have to carry it around with me and... Um, we have some issues with ice in the house because the ice machine broke. And so uh, we have to bring in ice. We have to freeze ice with with uh, ice cube trays. And my husband can't handle them because he has uh, peripheral neuropathy from a drug he's taking for the cancer. And it makes his hands and feet and mouth not be able to tolerate anything cold like even the cold tile on his feet makes it feel like there's like little electric shocks it's a weird thing it's um from the drug oxyplatin and so i have to be the one who brings in the ice <laughs> i don't have time to bring in ice he's been doing it all this time and now i have to do it you know that among a thousand other things i now have to do that i used to leave to him so anyway Instead of having full cups of ice water, I just only put a few cubes in so that I don't waste the ice, which seems ridiculous, wasting ice when you're just making it yourself. But really, it's a thing. So <laughs> that's why I was thinking about camels and 
how smart they are to just carry their own water. It's not ice water, but hey, they don't care. So I drew the camel and I decided to do some uh, reverse painting. Rather than painting the camel on the background, I decided to paint the background and make the camel stand out. So he's not a traditionally colored tan or brown camel. He's multicolored, but I just think it looks, I think it looks more cool than the other way around. So I drew them. I used permanent marker to do the lines. I drew a little blanket so that you could sit up there and, and uh, he could carry you across the hot, hot desert and a little uh, halter and reins. But of course, nobody's sitting on him right now. And the blanket that um, I, I think about when I think about how they ride camels is um, kind of a serape style with lots of bright colors and stripes and things and so that's the kind that I drew. I, I th think it's pretty accurate. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I've never been to a place where they ride camels <laughs> so um, I, I think that they use colorful blankets though and probably a saddle. I didn't put a saddle on there. And um, I used white gesso in the background, then I used three colors of Dina Wakely paint, sky, cheddar, and ruby to paint in everything. And I used a Stabilo All pencil to add some shading just to give it a more three-dimensional look. And then blending that with the water tank brush. I also end up using the black and the white fine tip Posca pens to add highlights and to add um, more uh, intensity to the black lines. I was using a fine tip pen and it wasn't quite as black as I wanted it. You know, there's different, there's different layers of black. There can be kind of black, sort of black, maybe a little black, and then you got black, black. <laughs> so <laughs> I needed the black, black in some places. So that's when I brought in the Posca pen, which is of course acrylic paint. And then when I was working on the face, I needed quite a bit of highlights to make the face appear dimensional to have, you know, if, if you feel your own face, there's places that stand out like your nose and your forehead and your chin, your cheekbones. Those are places where there should be highlights. Same thing on an animal. They've got the muzzle that's coming out and they've got, you know, different different areas of their face that stand out and I wanted wanted him to have expression I wanted him to be dimensional so I used the white Posca pen as a highlighter to do that um, even though the the bulk of the animal is a multicolored it still worked out to have those white highlights I thought and I ended up making more of like a character than a realistic portrait of what this animal looks like, but you can definitely tell what it is. So that worked, that worked out. So there was a lot of fussing, you know, at this point we're going back and forth with different pins and different, um, you know, defining and honing in everything at the last minute. So. I think I actually ended up speeding this up quite a bit because there was just a lot of doing. <laughs> I decided that the face wasn't quite right and so I had to adjust it a little bit, but it's all about the face, right? The face and the expression and the eyes are really what's important when you're drawing a person or a creature. All the creatures seem to have eyes and noses and mouths just like the humans so to me they seem to need expressions as well then the final thing I did with this one after I edged it with black of course ink like we were talking about before I like to edge things is I used some of the leftover acrylic paint and made a sun up in the sky there was there was an area that just kind of seemed sort of plain and blank so I, and it had been about the sun, so I went ahead and made a sun with those leftover paints, even a little bit of the gesso. 
So yeah, that's day, what, 10? <laughs> yeah, that's day 10. The camel. Okay, on to day 11. I received a Happy Mail package with a paper doll in it recently um, from the paper doll swap that I did with the self-portraits. And it had some cardboard in it that was just cut from a box to keep everything flat. I cut those into ATC size. I figured that they would be great for ATC backgrounds. And then I decided that I would use the gift things that were in this package to make this card. These aren't things that I purchased. These are things I received 100% as Happy Mail, except for this one little uh, scrap, <laughs> this one little yellowish greenish scrap of uh, gel print edge. That's something that I had in my basket. Just needed something to fill in that edge and it was the right color. But other than that, everything else, Oh, and the ribbon. I guess I own the ribbon scraps too. Okay, most of this <laughs> was made out of things that I received in the Happy Mail. There's uh, that very aged book text, which I attached with Liquitex Matte Gel Medium, my favorite. There's this printed tag that has the French word for garden on it, and it has some fruit that's either lemons or peaches, maybe. I'm not sure, <laughs> but they're pretty. And I had to trim it down a little bit because it was a little bit too big for the ATC. I did that on my guillotine cutter. And then I punched the hole and I'm attaching some ribbon that is made out of seam binding. Uh, seam binding is this silky ribbon that you can get. It comes in white. I think you can get it in other colors too, but the, the big roll of it that I have is white. But you can color it whatever color you want by spraying it with uh, an ink spray very easily. You could also use uh, ink pad or something or alcohol ink, but I just use spray on it. And this was a leftover piece that had some moss colored spray on it. So I used that and then kind of tucked it in behind so as if it was sticking out a little bit and stuck it down to the card. I also, she sent this, I think it's one of those Tim Holtz found relatives paper dolls things. I decided the lady should go on there. And then I also had this little scrap of lace that was just a scrap. And I put that on there as well. It, it felt appropriate. So I glued everything down. Then I went around the edges with some potting soil archival ink to do the edges like I like to do. And then I went in and used a Faber-Castell pit pin in a warm gray color to add some shadows. When I put a bunch of things on something, when I stick them down, I think it looks better and more integrated if you add shadows around them. If you don't do this, it looks like you glued something onto something. It doesn't look finished to me. So I like to add either Stabilo All Pencil or uh, alcohol marker or um, probably my, my favorite is probably this this type of a marker from Faber-Castell called a pit pen, which is India ink. It is a permanent ink when it's it's dry, it's permanent. But it, get, it has a little bit of give to blend it if you're on a sealed surface like this, which of course has been sealed with the matte medium. You can blend it a little bit, either with your finger or with a water brush like I did. I also use the same set of markers to add some color to this black and white photo it seemed very black and white against the more colorful background. So I used some flesh tone and some pink and um, even a little bit of yellow eventually to just kind of, I don't know, jazz it up a little. I also used a extra fine um, marker. It's also a pit pin, but it's the pit illustration pins in black. I wish that I had a gray. I would like to have a set of these illustration pins in gray. And I think that there is one. I just haven't had a chance to get it. <laughs> um, I need to look for it. I need to order it because I think it would be nice to have them in gray and not just black. Black is so harsh sometimes. And in this case, it really is, especially when I did the um, around the face 
it was it, I didn't really like the way it looked around the face but it just I needed to have some uh, illustration lines I like illustration lines and that's just I just needed to have them I jazzed up her hair with some brown I added some yellow to the uh, white part of the hat and the collar all those type of things just just to give it a little bit more finished look in my opinion so I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have of course give it a thumbs up you can leave me a comment or question below I usually answer within 24 hours uh, you can share this on Pinterest or Facebook pin it um, all those things really help my channel it helps other people find me it helps YouTube know that this is a valuable something that people would want to watch also if you could remember to just click on to something that has a million subscribers before you end this session if you're if this is your last video for the day that's apparently a thing these days so that's always helpful that's it for me for this video thanks bye bye <music>